In this video tutorial, we're going to have a look at Python instance variables. In the previous video of this playlist, we looked at this computer program here, and we can see we had this current account class, and within the current account class, we had these two methods. We had the initialization method, and we had the get customer name method. And on this line, we created an instance of this class, and on this line we simply printed out the customer name is and what this did it went and got the customer's name and printed that to the screen and of course the customer's name was Rita Jones which was passed to this parameter this parameter was then assigned to this particular variable here and this method returned what was stored in this self dot name which was assigned on this particular line now this variable here is an example of what will be an instance variable when we create an instance of this particular class. Now if we consider this computer program we can see it is an amendment of the program I've just been discussing and the amendments are as follows. I've added this particular line here self.balance is assigned zero to this method the initialization method. And down here, you can see I've added another method, and this method is called getCustomerBalance. Here, you can see I'm creating an instance of this class, and I've got this additional line here, where this will print the customer balances, and this will be a message to the object that's created, and the object will have this name bound to it, and this is going to be the method that is invoked in that particular instance and of course the method will be this one here let's now consider the class of this particular program mapped onto the following diagram and you can see that here the diagram is showing current account which is the name of the class here you can see we've got self.name and self.balance which we can see were here in the actual class definition and we've got initialization method which is this initialization method we've got the get customer name which is this one here and we've got the get customer balance which is this one here now of course when this particular program runs we know it's going to create an instance of the class we can see here in the diagrammatic form as well as in the code form and if we were to consider the object that's created the instance that's created in diagrammatic form we would consider it to look like this or this is how I prefer to think of objects now this particular object is going to have attributes which are going to be at the center as you can see here and they're called self dot name and self dot balance which is taken from this area of what is effectively a class diagram ie the attribute area and because these two variables are in the instance of the class we refer to these as instance variables now of course we can see from the class definition that we have these three methods so when we create an instance of the class we're going to have those three methods which I like to show in this reason there's the initialization one and here is the get customer name one now that's going to be an instance method because it is appearing in the instance of the class ie the object and of course we're going to have the get customer balance method which is another example of an instance method so as we look at this particular object representation what we can say is that the methods are the instant methods and the variables at the center are the instance variables let's consider the execution of this particular program now when we come on to this particular line here what's going to happen we're going to create an instance of the class and of course I'm showing the instance here now this instance is going to be bound to this particular name here account holder why that name well it appears here in the code as we can see now this object is going to be taking on what's defined in the class so we will know that we're going to have the initialization method and if we look to the initialization method we can see in here we have self.name and self.balance so what's going to happen is we know that the object is going to have those two variables as its instance variables which I'm showing here in the center as self.name and self.balance 
of course if we look to the class we also will know that the object is going to have an instance method called get customer name which you can see I'm showing here it'll also have the other method that appears in the class and that is get customer balance which you can see is appearing on the diagram here now when this line executes we know we're going to get this object and we know that this particular method is now going to execute and this is the initialization method so if we come over here we should know by now that self is going to receive the ID of the instance so self will be able to refer to the instance ie refer to the object and customer name is the formal parameter and it's going to receive this here Rita Jones and of course Rita Jones is going to be passed to here and on this line the string Rita Jones is going to be assigned to self.name and of course we can see that in the object as Rita Jones appearing here now on this line what we're doing we're saying self.balance is assigned zero and if we look to the object representation we can see that we have got zero appearing in here now of course that's going to be the balance of the current account so in other words when the object comes into existence the object is given the name of the customer in this case the customer the account holder is going to be Rita Jones and the balance is going to be set up as zero as you can see let's just look at this line for a moment and you can see I've got self dot balance is assigned zero now this means that when we create an instance of a new account holder then their balance is going to be set to zero I could have put here another formal parameter and that formal parameter could have taken in the balance so when a customer comes along a new account holder they could tell you their name and they could tell you how much they wanted to put into their account and we could have instead of having this zero being assigned to the self dot balance we could have taken in a parameter and of course the parameter would have appeared in this position within the brackets appropriately named and down here in these brackets we would have have to had another actual parameter which would have been the parameter for how much the customer wanted to deposit when they opened their account the first time putting that aside now let's return to this computer program and we're going to have a look at this line here and straight away we can see that it's a print line and this here the customer name is is going to be output to the screen and this is a message and we know it's a message because of this dot notation here and the message is going to go to the object to which this name is bound and clearly that is this object here following this dot we can see that we have get customer name and that's the method that's going to be invoked and that method is going to be this method here as it appears in the diagram or this as it appears defined in the class and of course we can see in brackets that we have the word self and of course we always have to have the word self if we want instant methods because that tells us the current object that's being used now on this line you can see that we're going to return self.name and of course the self.name was assigned on this line and we should know that self.name is holding Rita Jones so this Rita Jones is now returned using this particular program statement and it's returned to this position so when we look at the output what we're going to get is this the customer name is Rita Jones before I go on to look at the rest of this particular program I think this is an appropriate point to talk about the scope of the variables that you see in the center here on this line we can see that self.name was assigned customer name and on this line which is in a different method we were able to gain access to this particular variable self.name now the reason we were able to do that is because this variable has a scope that allows it to be accessed by this method and this method and any other methods code that are defined within the current account class now on this occasion we've only got the three as we can see 
and if we have a look at this method well we haven't seen fit to access this particular variable here because it's not part of the logic of the solution but if we look here you can see that we have self dot balance is assigned zero and this method here is able to return self dot balance and that's because the scope of self dot balance is such that all the methods in this particular class can gain access to this variable so the notion of scope is important and what I wish to stress if you want your variables here in the center to be accessed by all of the methods that are defined in this class then the use of the word self as you can see I'm highlighting here is essential if you don't use the word self then you will not have these variables having a scope that goes across the entire class and when I say the entire class I mean the instance of the class so in other words this method which is the instance method and this method which is an instance method if they wanted to could both gain access to these variables it's just that this method for the logic of the solution only needs to gain access to this variable and this method only needs access to this particular variable here let's now consider this line of the program and we can see it is a print statement and this literal string will be printed to the output and this here we can see is a message and of course it's a message to the instance that this name is bound to and this is going to be the method that is invoked which we can see is this particular method here and of course if we look across here we're really dealing with this method here and it naturally is going to return the balance which is shown here as self dot balance which means it's going to return what's stored in this variable here which we can see is zero and what we'll see at the output is the customer's balance is zero now just to summarize what I'd like to stress in the summary is what we've looked at here are instance variables and we've seen that the instance variables are instance variables because we've used this name self where self in all cases is going to be the ID of the current instance i.e. the current object we're actually dealing with and the use of this self is important if we're going to access instance variables now the next video in the series is going to look at how we can have local variables within methods that are not instance variables now one final thing self is not a keyword in Python you don't have to use the word self you can replace it with Fred blogs if you wanted to but don't use self this is standard practice when you write Python programs is to use self check out the supporting website for these videos and also consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and the Google Plus circle that relates to these videos in addition why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video